Yeah. Uh, in 2016, when like I was finalizing my first paper, I came to my supervisor room, Robin Walbina, who is just sitting here, and I asked him that like, how can we use the um, lidar data directly, for example, to classify the forest structures? And he told me that, uh, yeah, well, we have submitted our paper. Uh, and then he gave me um, his uh, draft version. So in this uh, study, we are uh, trying to estimate uh, above ground biomass uh, from the forest structures detected directly from LIDAR data. And we are comparing it with the, 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 overall, the overall data without any classification. So we all know that uh, LIDAR produces accurate canopy information, and it uh, measures the vertical heights of, of trees. And uh, the metrics derived from uh, LIDAR data, they are useful and, uh, and they are used to predict various forest attributes. For example, uh, volume, basal area, stand structure, and many more. Uh, I will mention two uh, LIDAR metrics, the L coefficient of variation and L skewness that can be used to, to uh, obtain forest structures directly from LIDAR data. So uh, LCV is actually a ratio between the second and first L moments. And L moments are uh, similar to the conventional moments, like uh, mean, variance, skewness, and kurtosis, but they are robust and smaller sample sizes, and they have fixed intervals. For example, the LCV is, uh, uh, varies from zero to one. And LCV is equivalent, like mathematically equivalent, to Gini coefficient, and Gini coefficient is, uh, an indicator that evaluates uh, inequality among trees growing in a forest. So this LCV can be used to separate even and uneven size forest structures. The second L moment is uh, the ratio, the L skewness is the ratio between a third to second L moments, and it is bounded between uh, minus one to one. And this can be used to evaluate the canopy closure. So we can use L skewness to separate like open canopies, eupotic areas, or oligopotic areas like um, closed canopies. Okay, so the L skewness and uh, L coefficient of variation, they are usable for structural mapping, but the structural complexity of forests, so it may cause difficulties in modeling the above ground biomass. For example, a same model applied to a large area uh, and different forest structures, uh, they, they may not be uh, appropriate. If we apply a same model to both like the, the even and uneven size forest structure or dense or sparse forest structures, so what if we apply, we uh, classify a forest into different structures, we apply a separate model to each structure, and then we compare it with the overall data without any classification. So will it improve our uh, biomass estimation, uh, and the biomass estimation will be reliable or not? The study was uh, conducted in Boreal Forest, Finland, and the dominant species are Norway spruce, uh, scout pine, and birch species. And we have like 244 field plots collected from different stand development classes like seedling, sapling, and advanced mature and seed trees and multi-story, and approximately equal number of field plots were, were collected from each strata. And then we applied rule-based classification to separate different structures. So we used L coefficient uh, 0 0.33 uh, because it uh, denotes uh, the represents a maximum entropy, and we separated even and uneven size forest structures. We used L skewness uh, zero, uh, which represents the symmetric uh, distribution. 
uh, and we separated the uh, open and closed uh, canopies. For above ground biomass estimation, we uh, used locally developed uh, equations for, for each for Scott Point, narrow spruce, and birch equation was used for uh, like birch trees and other deciduous species. And we calculated uh, tree level above ground biomass and we converted it to the uh, plot level and used as a response variable. Uh, we had many uh, LIDAR metrics, uh, for example, more than 100, so we needed to uh, select uh, a best subset among those um, uh, predictors. And for that, we used uh, our X subset package of R, and then we used KNN uh, method, and uh, we, uh, we used uh, the uh, best subset, and we predicted the uh, above ground biomass in each uh, forest structure and the overall data. We use cross validation, K fold cross validation. So, in our case, we use 10 folds cross validation. Uh, uh, like we divided the data into 10 folds, 10 groups. We removed, for example, the first one fold. We fitted the model with the nine uh, folds, and we uh, predicted the first one, and then we removed the second one, and so on. We calculated the RMSD and uh, 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 mean difference between the predicted and observed values to, uh, uh, to calculate the, to find the um, precision and bioma, uh, precision and bias. We also used uh, hypothesis test on the one-on-one -on -one correspondence between the predicted and observed to, 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 to find this correspondence analytically instead of visually. We also used um, sum up square ratio and R to R ratio. Sum up square ratio is the ratio between sum up square obtained from the predicted and observed values. And the R to R is the R squared uh, ratio obtained from the predicted and observed values. And the limit, and this SSR and R to R were used to ensure that our models are not overfitted. So the limit was 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, if the values of the SSR and R to R are less than 1.1, 1 .1, so the models will be not overfitted. So these are our uh, initial results. So we can. So uh, these are the uh, L skewness line and the uh, L coefficient of variation boundary, and these are the above ground biomass estimated in each development class. And we can see that the uh, seedlings are separated as even size, uh, and also the the mature trees and the young trees in advanced uh, stage, they were also separated as um, even size for structures. But the saplings were separated as um, uh, uneven size, and probably it's because of the lower uh, ALS returns, uh, and the, which increased the L skewness. So the L L skewness is high, and maybe it's because of these uh, values. And the other one is like the shelter root, which mostly, uh, which is mostly like uh, even size. But here, most of the um, uh, shelter root, they were also separated as uh, uneven size, and probably it's because the omission of the understory. And our like uh, point density was uh, 0 0.91 mit, uh, points per meter square, and any point density lower than three, at least three points per meter square are like not reliable for structural classification, particularly for the um, uh, Gini coefficient. Then we uh, compared the basal area and diameter distribution obtained from the. Uh, GC of basal area and GC of LIDAR. So, in the top we have uh, the GC basal area based even size forest structure, and and the down we have GC LIDAR based even size forest structure, and we can see that the distribution, the 
basal area in the diameter distribution are uh, quite similar. Here, like, uh, if we calculate the gene occupation from basal areas, so the maximum entropy reaches at 0 0.5. But if we calculate the GC from LIDAR, uh, tree heights, the maximum entropy reaches at 0 0.33. And similarly, the uneven size uh, forest structure, we have almost like similar uh, basal area in uh, diameter distributions. The estimated and uh, predicted above ground biomass, uh, the mean above ground biomass was uh, like similar in all cases, like 87 million gram per hectare, 89. 102, 105, and so on. And the accuracy assessment of the estimated and predicted above ground biomass, uh, we got like uh, under prediction in all cases, right under prediction. But in the uneven in the closed canopies, uh, the under prediction like uh, decreased as compared to the other values. And the precision is like, uh, we got like similar precision in uneven in uh, eupotic areas, but uh, it decreased in the oligopotic or closed canopies and the even size forest structures. The SSR in R2R values were below 1.1 in all cases, so the models were not overfitted in the hypothesis test, the one-on-one -on -one correspondence values are here, and it also showed the um, under predictions. So, L coefficient of variation in combination with L skewness, it could be used as analogous to the gene coefficient of uh, gene coefficient of basal areas for structural classification. L skewness will separate the even and even size forest structure, and the uh, the LCB will separate even and uneven size structures, and the L skewness will separate uh, closed and open canopies. In the above ground fire mass estimated, they are like uh, reliable, and it can be useful for better forest management planning and understanding of uh, natural dynamics within large geographical areas. Thank you.